You just gotta buy the and Getting the new camera, you're still gonna have to wake up and go like, huh, what will I make today? Hugest upgrade I ever had in my life was getting this. So, a couple things about this backpack. Hey, France, I wanna show you exactly how I packed for a recent trip here. Let me just, uh, sorry for the iPhone footage, because all my camera stuff's in here. Let me just get out what I use. This is the microphone I use, my Rode, and then this is, I have two Canon cameras. This one is an EOS R6. I think this is my R6 with a 15 to 35. And then this one has a uh, 24 to 105. This is an EOS R. Now, in this uh, trip, I actually had to bring a carry-on luggage and some lights and stuff. Okay, so in here, I've got a new cheap sort of Ameren 150 and then my old school Aperture 120D2, which I love. Let me set these up. Two Aperture soft boxes, the big guy and the little guy. Now, somewhere in here, I've got some clips and another little Bowens guy, kind of a little power thing, I've got a whole other camera, my Panasonic GH4 old guy down here i've got my peak designs carbon fiber tripod thanks peak design okay i want to show you exactly talk through exactly what i travel with when i'm doing a film shoot uh, and i just want to tell you how great this bag is this is not paid for we'll link to exactly what bag this is below all right i've got this and then this roller bag, okay, that I wanna, that I wanna walk you through. Let me set up my overhead camera. Okay, first of all, let's talk about this one. Canon EOS R6, Canon EOS R, each of them with a lens on it. These lenses don't take up a crap ton of space. The EOS R shoots 4K at a, Crop on a crop sensor, so it's like zoomed in and zoomed in, and it has a longer lens on it. So I just have to have a long C stand that I just push that camera way, way up there. Now, I also bring this uh, Ninja, okay? This is uh, whatever, this something, something Ninja. I have a Sony Atom X one terabyte hard drive in here. This was, the hard drive I think was probably as expensive as this thing. This is just a monitor that can record. I use this to get Long form is Canon 30 minute. Now, the other camera that I had set up just in case I needed a third angle was this Canon GH4, which can film as long as you have space for it. It chops things into five minute files. It's still great, you know? It's still like, just this old camera, you can still like get a great image. Most of, most of, like I didn't even look at the lighting here. Am I just blown out? I didn't even, look, at, look at my hair, oh God. You know, most of, most of filming stuff is, is actually lighting and action and, and sound. Oh God, this hair. I'm gonna edit, and I'm updating my kit page. So if any of you filmmakers out there wanting to learn this run and gun style, you know, youtube -y kind of thing, I'm gonna have recommendations on what I would be buying right now. One of the cameras I really want to buy, because look what I'm doing in here. I always have this, oh, set up my cool little backlight, which gives me a little bit of, oh, and turn on a little bit of ambient light over there. Um, I am always shooting in here, typically. I use 4K and I, all my videos are in 1080p, so I do a lot of like slow zooms and cutting in, making it seem like I have multiple camera angles when I really just have one. And I would love to get the 8K camera from Canon, and then the 8K shooter of this thing, because I think I would use it. Now, for this, I also have just a little stupid little clip-on anytime I, I might need it guy. I also have a Canon battery, like electric number, so I can just plug this in. I don't have to worry about my batteries. On the other one, I just had a bunch of batteries. Also have a little cable here for connecting that Sony hard drive directly to USB-C into my computer. This is an Insta360. Um, go to, this thing's surprisingly great. They have a new one that has a screen, which arguably would be even better. Um, I did just get a 
360, the RX, and then I did my first video and lost it in a lake. I have gone one time with my snorkel to go try to find it. I will go again and again. It's about 15 feet deep in very murky, ugly water that I have to walk through poison ivy to get to. But I'm going to find it because it's like 500 bucks and whatever. Maybe I'll need to buy another one. Sometimes I'm like, you just got to buy the shit. So much of this has cost like real money. But it absolutely enables my life. Hugest upgrade I ever had in my life was getting this, like at the time, like $800, $700 light. And then going over to these full frame Canon cameras, it just felt like so sick. It just felt so good and everything changed and it made me more creative maybe, but it just made me feel like a professional. Sometimes you gotta buy a new pair of running shoes before you take running seriously. But that being said, buying the new shoes, it's, you're still gonna resist running. Getting the new camera, you're still gonna have to wake up and go like, oh, what will I make today? The beginning of this video I shot on my iPhone and I looked at it for a second, I was like, oh, this is gross. But you could just shoot everything on an iPhone and better lighting than I had at the time in the beginning of this video and get actual action, mission, story, interest, intrigue, conflict, resolution, uh, curiosity, uh, amour, whatever, in, in a video. That's the hard thing about making videos, but it doesn't hurt when you can turn it on and have some lights set up and it looks really good. I needed to buy those running shoes to really feel like a professional, but I also did this for years before I spent that money, right? So that's why I'm gonna <laughs> keep trying to find my 360 camera in the freaking gross ass lake in Austin. It's like 500 bucks. It's not the end of the world if I have to buy a new one. I was so excited to get that though. I, when I bought my camera, I just bought a bunch of batteries. Okay, this is four, five, six batteries, I think I probably have total, six batteries. I've never needed more than this. And I, I use this plug-in thing in the studio, just lots of batteries. This DJI microphone thing is incredible, okay? You just, you have two independent things that you can clip onto somebody, and then this can go on your camera and you're recording directly to the audio on my camera, which makes my syncing up later non-existent. It's just so easy, right? Or I can record individually just out and about on the go, get audio while I'm filming a bunch of little B-roll. This thing's awesome. And it just, the form factor feels so good. You've, this is where I would go. I've recently used those Rode Go something something, and those are okay, but just, just, this just feels so much better battery charger, a lens for the GH4, and a couple of these, just in case I needed them, these old Tascam lapel mics that record individually. Some ND filters that I never use. I just never use. I am just running and gunning. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but I oftentimes when I'm outside of the studio, I just have the camera in automatic settings, uh, and unless I'm shooting 60 frames a second, it, it does fine. You'd be surprised how much you can get away with when you're outside of the studio with an action cam like this. This is so simple. So, a couple things about this backpack. Number one, extremely robust back panel and super comfortable straps. The luggage pass-through came in handy. I did not use these. Arguably, I should have taken these out before I left because these are just like hitting people as I'm walking through the aisle of the airport. But look at the just like, see how beefy and chunky this thing is, all right? This is from Tenba. I have done a review on this before and I just was, I, I pulled this out of the closet and was like, God dang, this thing's great. So padded. Like I said, there's that door in case I needed it, but that wasn't the kind of filming I was doing. I was just trying to get my shit out there, safe, with me, while I was, like, I, with my kids, like, I had to be able to check in a bag and carry, like, another roller with this. So, it was just about space and safety for this trip. And some of the things that I absolutely loved were this. This top flap here, super, super padded. Great if you wanted to throw a camera right in here. I ended up using it for headphones and just quick access while I was on the plane. This fit right under the airplane seat in front of me, so it was with me the whole time. This front flat pocket 
right here, actually some useful stuff. Got my battery in case I needed it, my notebooks, and my field notes notebook. Uh, this is a bigger one that I'm using for more like personal project, thinking through just a little bit more size. And I've had it going for like over a year now. And this one is my like every day, just ramble, write some stuff in. Uh, this is their Expedition series, which has waterproof and tearproof paper. I'm not typically writing things down as I'm... Actually, while I recorded this interview, I did write down some notes. And I've gone back and looked through those notes. I've got this whole idea that you write things differently when you're writing by hand. You don't write as much, especially if it's in a little page with a little pen, this little Bellroy micro pen, which I freaking love. This whole thing in my pocket right here with the super like strong paper, it's been killer. But the interview itself was incredible. And while I was just sitting back there making sure the cameras and audio is working, I was taking notes like, um, our culture has a problem with limitations, frailties, and endings, okay? This is what one of this guy's takes on. We have a death-phobic culture, and it, he's been with thousands and thousands and thousands of people as they were dying and helped their families come to terms with it and was working in hospice effectively like as like a minister of death in Canada. And has probably more experience there maybe than, than anybody at this time. And he thinks it's a real problem, our inability to comprehend that our ending, endings happen. That limitations and frailties are something that we seek to resist or step beyond in, like to the detriment of our life right now. Anyways, more of a philosophical idea, but just the kind of stuff that's like going in the notebook. And then I, I did have a little like, you know, make sure you get the shot of Steven close up. Make sure you do switch it to manual focus. And it's a little notebook like this is helpful when you're doing shoots like that, right? But um, USB-C cable for my headphones, my Focal Bathys, which I will link to at this time code. They're spendy, but they have a DAC mode, which means I plug USB-C into them, USB-C into my computer. And now I'm charging my headphones and while I'm while I'm editing, and the sound's incredible, the noise cancellation's incredible. It's like right now they're 700 bucks, but they are worth every penny. I did not have to pay for them, okay? I would pay. F I would pay them. Pay for like if something happened, and all everything went away, and I had to start from scratch. I would start with those headphones. I would. I would save up for them. Maybe. I don't. It depends on how scrappy I was needing to be. If I was in the mode of like. Let's do something nice for ourselves and like set up a digital, I mean, work digitally on bits and bops on the freaking computer screen for a living. Might as well make that nice, right? These are my musings. AirPods as well, arguably would have done just fine, though they tend to, you know, I don't know how much, how much time you end up getting out of your AirPods that wouldn't have lasted the whole flight. I could have just stopped working on the flight, but I did edit the whole thing on the way back, right? It's nice to not have to stop. There's a little like zipper out, like put a tripod right here. There's there's a water bottle compartment that's too tight, not big enough, wasn't big enough. I had to carry my water bottle by hand, but that's fine. I had it sitting next to me in the, in the window. Like that is, an, that is something that like, if I was traveling all the time with this, that would be a bummer. I'd have to go with a smaller water bottle, which I don't like to do. But then the, um, then the laptop is right here on the front of the bag. And it's been a long time since I've used this bag or any bag that puts the laptop in the front of the bag. Man, it just worked great. This bag was incredible. And then my favorite of all ever roller bags. Okay, this is literally what I what I traveled with. My Earthrunner sandals, which I went on a hike with. A spare shirt that I never wore. A spare shirt that I never wore. A pair, a long sleeve cotton shirt that I wear as as uh, as my jammies. A pair of running shorts that I never wore. A pair of extra pants that I never wore. You see, like this was just a quick trip Th three nights. I was staying at my dad's house, and and it's just the kind of thing where I. I'll just wear the same stuff. Honestly, when I'm at my dad's house, I have a pair of shorts there, that, like swim trunks that I go in the sauna and the pool and do the workouts in, and I just, live in, I just live in those swim shorts. So that's a bit different. My Fuji X100T, which, or F, what is this now? This is the F. 
Arguably, I really wish I would have taken a shot or two with Steven with that. My iPad, which I never brought out, but I had some movies on in case I wanted. Look at this, a little workout band and a rolling ball. This is super helpful. Put it under your feet, put it under your shoulders, put it under your scapula, put it against a wall and lean up against it. I just love this. But look at the way this bag just opens, okay? Everything's super solid. I did have to like grip it and rip it to zip this thing up, this big old number 10 zip, right? But man, oh, I just love this bag. Had a, another one of these things, we call this a tripod, and then this guy uh, in there, some gaff tape I never used, and a power thing that I just leave in here. Arguably one of my favorite features on this thing is this side thing on both sides. You've got a water bottle holder or like just an extra, extra little like slip some stuff in. You can't, this is huge. This, me, this helped me so much. My daughter's water bottle was here and mine was over there. This made my life so easy when we were in transit. Thanks Shimoda. This is my favorite roller bag to date. There isn't a roller, I've got, I am collecting roller luggage if you have a, like a, of one that you love on that. I'm just looking for some of the best of the best. If you're gonna invest the money in a roller bag, like what would you do? This has been my my like most solid pick for a long time now. I love this thing. Links to it below, support the channel, thanks. Okay, I really just wanted to, like as I was unpacking, I was like, wait, don't unpack, just make a quick video on this. Cause I wanted to shout out to Tenba about this bag that they did an amazing job. And I can't remember what size this is. I'll, I'll mention in the description exactly what size that is. But uh, you know, this is, what questions do you have about my kit and my gear? If any, you just want to, what, what are you watching this video for? I was, uh, I was stoked to help out my, my co-parenting partner uh, in this really great interview with a really cool, Dude, who's I just I just vibed with him a lot. This guy showed up and he was just like big hat, big scarf, Canadian tuxedo, like white denim, Canadian tuxedo with a vest, and you're just like, whoa, bro. <laughs> but I mean, I've been following him for years. Like, he's a gangster, total gangster. And that that uh, that's he's you know his latest books about becoming an elder. I had this saying that was. You know, this there's this there's this idea that there where are the elders? You know, where are the grown-ups in the room? Where are they? Like Biden, Trump, neither of them feel like an actual grown-up. <laughs> you know, like where are the grown-ups who are like, well, here's how physics works, and and here's what we know about aging, and and here's what really matters. They're just feeling forgotten and left behind maybe and, and like unsexy in a culture that is consumed or addicted or uh, uh, resistant, like la 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 to anything that doesn't feel like fresh, innovative, new. Uh, I don't know. But as, you know, I'm having, I'm soundly in my midlife crisis. And I have the like pending divorce and uh, career confusion and you know, manic depression, sometimes feeling really great and sometimes feeling like, oh my God, like I can't, I can't go another day. Death of my brother, total, like total blow up in my family to lose him. Now it's just me. So that's why it was important for me to go visit dad and help Melissa do this filming and, uh, I don't normally travel with all the lights and the camera and do all this stuff. I don't, I, I'll, I'll do that here. It's easy. I have everything. I can fit it all in the car. I can bring a bunch of stuff. When you have to travel on an airplane, it's just... But I was stoked to do it because I knew I'd get time with Dad. And it was all good. And the interview was really good. So I hope, uh, I hope you have some fun shit to record. I hope you don't let the gear you think you need keep you from the creative projects you can do right now, which oftentimes you're this, like a piece of paper, not even this, just printer paper, fucking right on your hand, away from really deciding to do something and doing it, right? We can't forget that. We must not forget this. 
So, anyways. That's all. That's I didn't really have a point in this video. It was just that. Show off my shit. Show off my shit. And also show, like, how disorganized and thrown together it all is. And how, like, when you're really, really good at something and you know exactly what you need to do, you can just... I didn't geek out about this at all. I just grabbed the first bag that looked big enough, and I have lots and lots of bags that are in Tupperware boxes in the storage shed, right? I'm just like, ah, oh, this one will be fine. Throw as much in there as possible. Grab. I knew I was going to take this. Grab it. I needed a big roller to throw this stuff in, which I was really worried about getting that huge soft box in. But you just go. You just go. As long as you have the batteries and the cameras and the lights and the audio and the notebook and the spare battery and some extra batteries on top of that and maybe an audio backup thing. And like an iPad that has a little bit of like maybe some downloaded movies in case you, in case you don't edit on the plane. And it may, probably bring another pair of pants. <laughs> but even with that kind of like bring a few extra things, it wasn't all that that much. I don't know. It seems like it's a lot, isn't it? I like getting to film stuff and record stuff. I'd like to show you some of my old videos from back in the day, but we'll stop there. I still owe you a video on how to be yourself. That's in here. Bye.